This is remarkable. This uh, Franklin Roosevelt, uh, in his State of the Union address this uh, to the 77th Congress on this day back in 19-whatever the year was, and let me get Harvey on and just tell us all about this. Professor Harvey Kay is with us, Professor of Democracy and Justice Studies at the University of Wisconsin at Green Bay. He's the author of The Fight for the Four Freedoms, What Made FDR and the Greatest Generation Truly Great, and uh, his Twitter feed is uh, slash Harvey J. K. K. A. Y. E. Hey, Harvey. Tom, it is great to hear your voice, and it is so cold here in Wisconsin this week that just to know I was coming on, I warmed up. <laughs> well, that's sweet. That's sweet. It's it's frighteningly cold here for for D.C. Um, so, Professor, here the, I, I I'm reading the the speech that uh, that FDR gave. And he says, a free nation has the right to expect full cooperation from all groups. A free nation has the right to look to the leaders of business, of labor, and of agriculture to take the lead in stimulating effort, not among other groups, but within their own group. The best way of dealing with a few slackers or troublemakers in our midst is first to shame them by patriotic example. And if that fails, to use the sovereignty of government to save government. Save government? Save government. And I was really worried about the possibility that there were, you know, corporations that were still cooperating with Nazi Germany in 1941. And uh, and he was seriously concerned that they might actually undermine the war effort in favor of their own profits. So when he gave that address on January 6, 1941, basically he was speaking to the American people to mobilize them for defense. And he knew over the horizon the war, the war that was already waging in East Asia and in Europe. And he was concerned, seriously concerned, that he might not secure the cooperation of big business that he knew was essential, basically, to mobilize the you know arsenal of democracy and then to to win the war. Right. His his four freedoms. Uh, the, the four freedoms get all the attention. You know, the, the freedom of speech, freedom of uh, to worship, freedom from want, freedom freedom from fear. Um, but, and I want to get into that. But I think that. Earlier on in the speech, he said the basic things expected by our people of their political and economic systems are simple. They are equality of opportunity for youth and for others, jobs for those who can work, security for those who need it, the end of special privilege for the few, and the preservation of civil liberties for all. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that, I mean, there's a great speech. You know, it isn't just those four freedoms, which are wonderful and so inspiring. It's also that when he was talking to the American people, he knew that many were concerned that, in fact, the New Deal might be in jeopardy. And conservative members of Congress, uh, both in the House and the Senate, overwhelmingly Republican in, in those terms, they were saying, well, OK, well, we're going to prepare for defense and going to prepare for war. So therefore, we should end all of the New Deal initiatives. Basically, we need to suspend what we've been doing and possibly even just, you know, destroy them, you know, bring them to an end. And Roosevelt said, wait a second. He said, you're going to if you're going to mobilize for defense and for war, it doesn't mean you suspend the victories of these last several years. You actually do more than that. You don't just even sustain them. You advance them. I mean, he understood what a democracy was about, and he knew that if you're going to go to war, you've got to have healthy, confident, educated people, people who feel their rights, who feel that they are defending not not a country owned by the one percent, but a country which is theirs in the most fundamental sense of freedom, equality and democracy. And that's what that speech was about, really. It wasn't just... I mean, it was fundamentally, you know, call to war in some ways, I think, more important than the Pearl Harbor speech. Mm -hmm. um, but it was also this sort of declaration that we're going to continue to sustain our values. Now, he made terrible mistakes in the in the weeks that came that followed the internment of the Japanese Americans and other things. But the fact is that on the grandest scale, he did try to encourage Americans to see that this war was going to really be about those four freedoms. And and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but at at various points in his presidency, did not Franklin Roosevelt basically say that it is that 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 it is the responsibility of government to be the employer of last resort, essentially that there should not be unemployment in the United States of America? 
Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, over and over again, the idea of the New Deal was not simply to, to, to you know, get us out of an economic depression by way of a recovery. It was also to carry out major projects of, first of all, relief, but then beyond that, reconstruction and reform. And, you know, if there hadn't been a depression, but for some reason Roosevelt had been elected, you know, it's difficult to imagine, you know, things that alternative. But it's still likely that Roosevelt would have pursued many of the projects he pursued in the face of the Depression. I mean, he believed in the Civilian Conservation Corps. He believed in modernization. He believed in, in engaging Americans in the labors and struggles that, that, were, that were required for Americans to advance themselves and their nation at the same time. But in, so indeed, I, I think that what, what Roosevelt saw in his eight years in the New Deal is the degree to which not only he had these ideas as a progressive, liberal, democratic politician, but also that Americans themselves had these kinds of hopes and aspirations and want to apply, wanted to apply their energy to them, which is also, again, to go back to the speech, why when he says, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want and freedom from fear, he doesn't think he's talking to people about something they don't know anything about. He truly believes that these are the fundamental ideals of American life. Right. So if if we had a nation and had had a nation for the, I mean, basically this all got suspended after the war and, and you know, the, mm -hmm. and, 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 in, and in really in, in larger part, I suppose, with the election of uh, Eisenhower in 52, um, if we had a nation where you were guaranteed a job, where the the government was the employer of last resort, there was always zero unemployment. Nobody ever had to fear unemployment, and there were, and the wages were such that you know the kind of Teddy Roosevelt square deal definition. You know that mm -hmm. that that, yeah. that you could you could raise the your American family. standard of living. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You could raise your family. You could put your kids through school. You had enough to pay for health health insurance. You had enough to set aside a reasonable retirement for old age. Uh, direct quote from Teddy Roosevelt. Um, how different would America be today? Just with that one thing. I mean, he, he also talked about, you know, making sure that everybody had free education, free health care and housing if they needed it. Yeah, but let's just right. look at and jobs. I, I mean, how different would this country be if we all agreed that the government should be the employer of last resort? Every one of us who just heard your question is probably doing what I'm doing here. On, uh, I'm nodding in agreement. And, to, and that kind of America would be a healthier America, a better fed America. I mean, this would be a, this would be the America that Americans have always, have always wanted, uh, not to go on at length, but you know, a few years later in January of 1944, Roosevelt followed up the four freedom speech with his economic bill of rights speech and right. lays out all the very things that you're talking about as a project for post-war America. Right. And, and do you know of any country that has done that? On that scale, well, the Europeans themselves, I think, were really inspired by Roosevelt's Four Freedoms and the Second Bill of Rights. And I think if you look at, at what happened in Europe after the war, you'll, you'd see the development of many of those things. Um, I think probably the great shock is that it's America, you know, leading the way intellectually and culturally and politically, and then failing to actually pursue the very things that Roosevelt and Americans themselves wanted. In 1943 and 1944, surveys showed that 85% of Americans wanted a full, all-out social democratic America in the post-war years. Wow. But of course, the Republicans and conservatives, uh, you know, rallied against it. And Roosevelt himself passed away on April 12th, 1945. By the way, we're coming up to the 70th anniversary of that this spring. Um, so, you know, if he had lived, you know, that's a whole that's a whole other discussion we can have. Yeah. Yeah. Or if just his idea had lived. Uh, d d d well, I, well, you know, Truman, Truman, when he came into office on, Rose, on Roosevelt's death, he spoke of doing just that. But he really he really wasn't up to the task. He didn't have the kind of the kind of political skills and talents that Roosevelt did. Right. And he, he basically backed off because, because, by the way, no president can pursue any initiative without the backing of the American people, organized Americans. I'm with you. Professor Harvey K. Hang on just a second. This is the Tom Hartman Program. You can tweet Harvey at Harvey J. K. K. A. Y. E. And uh, he's the author of The Fight for the Four Freedoms, What Made FDR and the Greatest Generation Truly Great, among other brilliant books. Thank you, Harvey. Thank you, Tom.